I think there is a sense where, you know, we've spent so much time building, whether it's your your career or you spent yeah. so much time building your business up, you've spent so much time building relationships inside of the community, mm-hmm. you've spent so much time, you know, building this life for yourself. And all right. of a sudden, what COVID did is, is it laid bare all the weaknesses inside of each of us. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Around a Roundtable. Even though we're not around a roundtable, it's still called Around a Roundtable. It's with me. It's with JJ. Let's bring him in, as we always do. JJ, what's happening, my friend? Good to see you. <laughs> what's up, man? Hey, I'm still around a roundtable. So. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> why it's what called what about. it is. You are the one around the table, and I love it. Uh, but, but, dude, we are we are ending. We're walking closer and closer to our time of finishing up this little quarantine. Uh, we're right. getting there, right? We are about yeah. to get to a place where we can start wearing pants again. <laughs> Wait, are you, are you not wearing pants? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. It'll, I mean, you'll have to I've just... Wait, you mean we have to take off our comfy leggings now? And That's true. <laughs> our leggings our leggings have to be removed. Yeah. No more have, yoga pants, man. We have to put official <laughs> jeans on, my friend. Official jeans. Uh, so. man, I'll tell you what. I actually look forward to that day because I'm sort of, I don't know how to put this, Coop, but I'm sort of a jeans snob connoisseur. Jeans. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why does this not shock me about you? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably true. Probably is not. It's like, no, dude, I'm like, I'm seriously into like salvage denim. I have been for quite a while. And okay. I spent an inordinate amount of times like researching my, my jeans and ordering them from companies that are far flung, but that make like jeans that are like, basically they're, they're not washed, right? Like, I, do you know what salvage denim is? You're going to, you're going to have to give me a little bit of insight on it. I know just enough yeah, to be silly. I and I know that, you know, way more than I do. So hit me with I the do. knowledge. I know, my friend. I know a lot. I won't, I won't take you into the depth of how, <laughs> how fabric, okay. you know, weaves and like all that kind of stuff. All I'll say is this is like salvage denim tends to be quite a bit better made than your normal pair of Levi's or something right. like that. All right. Um, and, and they're defined by kind of the way they finish off the edge on them. And so you'll always know somebody's wearing salvage denim. If you see them kind of rolling the cuff up and there's like a little kind of like uh, fabric piece, almost like a white with like red kind of piping oh. around the, the edge down there. I've seen exactly. that. So that's good to know that that's yeah. that's what it is. I can go say, they're, I know wearing, all about your jeans when I see those people now. <laughs> they're wearing them fancy jeans, man. But the good news with like salvage denim is this is like when you buy a pair of salvage denim, they last forever because they mm. come to you unwashed. And so you get them basically as raw as possible. Wow. And so what you do with them, this is they'll sound really gross and really weird, but you need to wear them for like three to six months without washing them at all. Um, oh, okay. because here's here's the deal is that when you do that, dude, it wears into your body like uh, the jeans actually get uh, all the wear spots of how you uniquely wear them so it'll be like wow. how you sit in your your car for instance and how you rub against the car door as you get out rubs off just a little bit of the blue from it and it gets okay. just a little more wear than you know if you get up from your desk and you always bang a certain part of your leg or the way you crease your jean as you sit down like you, your knee adds very specific types of creases wow. there and then kind of like up by the pockets and so what it does then is after you've worn them for about like three to six months i tend to go to the six month range but you know each person <laughs> you, around, you overachiever um, don't judge me i know but um when you wash them that first time, all of a sudden they come out and dude, they are amazing. They're like oh, the most wow. beautiful jeans you've ever had because you just invested six months of your body and your life wearing these things wow. to put the most beautiful creases and kind of wear spots in them. And it's almost like a piece of art actually on your what? legs. Dude, you're, it's incredible. You're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna talk me into buying a $200 pair of jeans right now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't be the first person I've talked to, but you know, <laughs> here's the here's the deal though is like I, I had a pair of salvage denim jeans from APC that uh, that they ended up splitting a couple months back like mm. like not splitting but the the fabric actually like finally wore apart on them and yeah. I had this deep sense of like. Um, kind of an anxiety mixed together with a sense of like sadness and grief. You worked hard on them things, man. So much time. <laughs> well, they were the most beautiful. Je- like, I, like, honestly, dude, like I had worn these things for like years. And so I sat oh, there man. going like, oh my gosh, you know, and, and it makes me feel deeply like society might be in that same spot right now coming out of COVID. Um, uh, you know, I think, I think ooh, there's the flip on you. Yeah. Um, I see where you're headed now. I think, I think there is a sense where, 
you know, we've spent so much time building, whether it's your your career or you spent yeah. so much time building your business up, you've spent so much time building relationships inside of the community, mm-hmm. you've spent so much time, you know, building this life for yourself. And all right. of a sudden, what COVID did is is it laid bare all the weaknesses inside of each of us, right? Man, that's and just so like true. with jeans, how, you know, the wear spots, that is, the wear spots are where it will rip because that is where you're constantly tugging on the jean. And right. I think what COVID did is it, it tore on the social fabric right and now the right. social fabric has has ripped apart and so the question we have to ask ourselves is you know how do we repair and restore trust because um dude i think about like we just had an experience like about a week ago that, that rocked our world here and it's not just covid happening right there's all right. kinds of things right. in our world that rip the social fabric out. for sure for and, sure and about a week ago right outside of our house there was a hit and run accident and a, and a mm. guy who had stepped out of his car to pick something up got hit by what we think was a drunk driver and, and he's a quadriplegic oh, now and that's that's the kind of thing that you know it's 200 feet from where my kids play like yeah. how do we trust that again it's yeah. that wear spot you know where you're sitting there going like eh, you know i'll let my kids play in our driveway and you know i know the road's a little busy out front but you know they'll right. stay in the driveway and then right. all of a sudden somebody gets hit and is paralyzed and you're like how do i trust that again yeah. you know you look across the country from us in georgia at the uh, ahmed arbery case you know a yeah. guy running in his own neighborhood and you know he gets shot by somebody and how do you how do you build social right. trust how do you how do you find that place right. to be able to step out again? And yeah, so you find yourself looking, looking kind of uh, in the rearview mirror, for lack of a better analogy, right? Like it's always like yeah, you're, you're kind yeah, of looking right. over your shoulder a little bit, and and it's uh, it's not because uh, anything necessarily happened happened to you directly, but it's like all yeah. these little experiences, all these things that have happened in our world, and, and maybe it's a fear based thing. Uh, out of watching the news or seeing like what you saw in your in your neighborhood now all of a sudden it's like oh it gives you that check and now a little bit of uh lack of trust has kind of crept in at that point how do you how do you get beyond that how do you move on and excited well the good news is this with salvage denim uh you're able to actually repair the denim to look like normal Uh, i grew up uh, my house, my mom, uh, I, I used to rip the knees of my jeans when I was a kid all the time because I'd be doing Get that big stupid. old patch like, on there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? And the best part was if my, my mom's going to be watching this, I'm sure she'll be horrified I'm even talking about this. But like, you know, she'd always get like the denim patch that was like denim color. Right. It was but like it clothes. Really. It's like that weird kind of blue color. Right. And so then she put it on there and I was always just like, ugh. Because back it, then, right? like rather, the patches weren't like, it wasn't cool to have patches in your pants back then. So it was like, <laughs> no, dude. you know, now. Nowadays, you could kind of get away with it, but but then it was right. like, oh, that guy's got patches in his knees. Look at that. Dude. You know? <laughs> right. Oh, right. You know, when I started getting into salvage denim, I started staying there going like, well, hey, when these jeans rip, like, how do I fix this? I don't want to be like patch guy, right? Like, that's right. weird. Uh, right. But it turns out there's actually a process from way back, back pre-1950s when uh, workers, when denim Seriously. was more of a, a blue collar workforce type yeah. uh, implement, like a, a real gear that they use day in and day out. Um, there's a process called darning and Singer, uh, darning. Singer sewing machines uh, came wow. up with a darning machine. And what it did is it actually, dude, they're like the most magical things you've ever seen in your lifetime. They actually reweave where the jean has ripped, they reweave it as if it was brand new all over again. And it's okay. So it doesn't, it doesn't to, look like a patch at that point. It literally will, no, will make it look it looks, brand new at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It, look, wow. it looks like real denim right there. And it does it by this process. I I've, I've spent way too much time watching YouTube videos on this, <laughs> but you basically, you have to like, you stabilize the denim. First and foremost, you have to have another piece of fabric that oftentimes doesn't look like the piece of fabric that ripped. Cause you need to know how to, to, to see where it's at, where the rip okay. is. You put it okay. there and you kind of tape it in there so that that way it is stabilized because you can't do anything until you've stabilized right and then you have yeah. to clean the whole off you have to cut off all the little loose ends of, of threads that have wow. been kind of worn away right there so you you clean off um that hole and then you have to do it really slowly and methodically once it's stabilized and cleaned and you start kind of reweaving and, and it's you watch it and it's super crazy because it's like watching magic happen it goes back and forth the needle back and forth back and forth back and forth and they go back and forth over this area for like you know minutes at a time wow. and when they back all of a sudden you start seeing oh it's, it's reweaving and you go past where the hole was past where the rip was into the healthy parts of the fabric hmm. that haven't ripped yet in order to fully stabilize it and so it's I a slow the process rip- then it's not it's not a oh, quick dude. thing it's a slow methodical oh, kind of no. thing yeah and you wow. have to take your time and you have to you have to really think through how you're repairing it and in the same way that 
all these salvaged denim that I spent months with my body and my life trying to build mm-hmm. into this perfect work of art. Uh, the same way that, that that rips and can be repaired, I think that our lives post COVID and, and even post all the craziness that happens just around us on a daily yeah. basis, I think it can be healed and repaired uh, through a process that Thomas More, he's a Catholic monk, um, he said was called soul care, right? And soul care mm. is one of those things where you begin to look at the interior of your soul and say, hey, this is something worth tending toward. And the way that my soul reacts to the world around me is the way that I will kind of envision and see what's happening around me. And so hmm. it, there's no one size fits all to healing us, right? Because the right. rips in a gene are all different sizes and different right. shapes. Right, yeah. places and in the same way with us like what rips inside of our souls especially in moments like covid is very different right it could be a sense of impotence that you just can't like i, I feel powerless in the world right i have no ability to shape and change anything around me that could be a rip it could be something like grief mm-hmm. just hey mm-hmm. the things that i've lost could be the rip yeah. it could be um loneliness just the sense that like hey i thought i had friends and now you know for the first week or two they were texting but all of a sudden like yeah no, they're not yeah, or it's no, like hey maybe i don't know people you know it could be just mistrust right like sitting right. there going like hey am i gonna have food tomorrow am i gonna have a job tomorrow heck how do i trust the people around me to know whether or not they're bringing you know a disease into my life yeah so you know, or- so what what i'm hearing is it, like we were already you know, pre COVID, we were already, I think we would all say we were pretty divided, right? It was a pretty yeah. polarizing uh, society that yeah. we lived in. And now as we enter back into that society, we're, we're, ar- we're already going to bring what was polarizing even, even more yeah, into dude. that. And what you're saying and what I'm hearing you say is that, that really the way to step back into that and begin to build some of that that trust back again and and some of that healing and the connection is to do some of that soul care that you were talking about. Yeah, man. I like soul care is the process of looking inside of ourselves and saying, "Hey, how do I choose gratitude today?" right? Mm. How do I, you know, maybe maybe I was, you know, not sick, but you know, I could I could be thankful for that, but you know, maybe we didn't, you know, lose too much. Maybe I didn't right. uh die, you know, all those things. These are things to be thankful right. for. Low hanging fruit, if yeah, not the high absolutely. level stuff. It's like, hey, I've got a house to stay in. I've got people yeah. that are still calling me. I've yeah. got the ability. It's Finding gratitude, finding the things to be grateful for in our lives really shapes the lens in which we view That's society good. and view all the people around us. Because if we look at people as taking from us, well, then we lose all sense of gratitude, right? But if we right. look at it as like, hey, I'm thankful for the things that I have, uh, regardless of whether I should have had more, regardless of whether like, right. you know, the world worked the way that I thought it did. I'm taking the choice to say, hey, gratitude matters for me and that this idea of thankfulness heals our sense of entitlement. Man, I love right? I, I love that because I know in my own life, I, I've tried to, to practice gratitude, as they say, right? To practice gratitude yeah. in each and every morning, just spending a few minutes being thankful for those low hanging fruits, you know, the breath in my lungs for right. the day, uh, for the little higher yeah, ones, like the, the jobs that we have or the houses that we have. And, and even in the face of, of some crazy detrimental stuff, practicing gratitude uh, is such a, I, I, I know for me, it's been such a powerful tool to use to bring, to bring forth some, some good healing in my life. And it sounds like that's what we need uh, to, to maybe keep in our forward thinking as we step back into society as a whole. Yeah. And I think it's, it's that it's really a process of mindfulness, right? Of Mm. a mindfulness that says, Hey, how do I both be grateful for what I have and how do I see others? You know, uh, on Wednesday night, we talked about kind of seeing the child of God in another person. And I think when we drop the caricatures of another person and drop just the externals that we see and begin to dive in and actually see who a person is with all their hurts, with all their baggage, with all all their hangups with all the beautiful things inside of them with all the skills that they bring and when we see a person and when we bring gratitude it begins to heal that sense of trust again and mm. again like i'm not saying to be crazy and just go run out and not wear a mask and you know <laughs> yeah like, that's you know, not what we're saying go you know sit right next to somebody in a disclaimer restaurant we are not saying <laughs> yeah. to do that. share food and, here would you like to drink out of my glass yeah 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 this is a, we're not yeah. saying to be crazy be be healthy yeah. and be uh be wise but 
be thankful and be grateful. And then, mm-hmm. you know, mindfulness also requires us to, to lean into the, the darkness, so to speak, of ourselves yeah. and of our society and of our life, of leaning in and, and being the light that shines in the center of that, being the people that don't run away just to the clean, safe parts, but to step into the things that feel awkward and weird, that feel scary, that feel yeah. um, like they cause us anxiety. And our mindfulness of stepping in, bringing thankfulness and gratitude, bringing a sense of seeing one another, I think possibly could heal stuff. And then we as a church, as Mercy Road downtown, mm-hmm. I think if we were to take that posture, we become that sense of light and that sense of um, unanxiousness in the middle of a city. And I'm telling you, yeah. when you act that way, people see it. It's pretty Man, crazy. I, I love that, JJ. I think that's a powerful uh, way of, of kind of putting a, a full wrap on your on your denim uh, uh, love. <laughs> but man, that, that's such a that's a such a great analogy to be able to see those two together from the from the denim to the way we're going to step back into society and and I'm really excited to get back to it. Uh, we do have a date, right, that we are going to be back officially in the Athenaeum. Yes, we do. June seventh, Sunday, June seventh, will be our first day back in the Athenaeum where awesome. we'll be worshiping together. Um, it's going to be a little bit different. We we'll probably have to cap the total number of people, all those kinds of things. Yeah. Before that. We've got a few church services that are going to be happening, and we're actually, I, I'm hoping we're going to be able to put them um, actually live on a Sunday morning and have like 10 to 15 type of people uh, be able to show up. So if you're interested, right. uh, we'll open up a way of, of doing that here pretty That's quick. Great. But that said, this week, 9 a.m. on MercyRoad.tv and on Facebook Live, for the time being, we are still on those places. So make sure right. you're looking there. Make sure you're you're watching the Wednesday night stuff. Make sure you're sharing these with friends because this is actually important for building our community. This is how we draw people in and bring people in is by sharing our concepts and, and sense of life of how we do life together. Yeah. So make sure you're doing that. And I'll bring you uh, all kinds of salvage denim washing tips. I'll, I'll tell you yeah. how to wear your jeans in. I love it. I, we're, <laughs> I'll have pants on next time. So it'll be great. <laughs> I will look forward to that. <laughs> All right. Well, that is All a right, wrap brother. for this week. We'll see you soon, everybody. <laughs>